In today's episode, we'll be focusing on macroeconomics and geopolitics, all with Bob Mason of FX Empire. This is The Week Ahead. Hello, Bob, and thank you for joining us once again today as we look at the week ahead. Uh, let's start with macroeconomics. Uh, it was a busy start uh, to the month. Can we expect the same in the second week of the month? It was a busy week ahead on the economic data front. For the US, we got inflation and retail sales figures due out. Expect the retail sales figures to have a material impact on the dollar. Uh, consumer spending remains a key contributor to the US economy. Um, earlier in the week, we got job openings on Monday, so quit rates will be the area of focus. And then there's industrial production and consumer sentiment figures on Friday as well. So expect retail sales figures to be the key driver. Positive numbers, and that supports the optimistic outlook and positive sentiment towards the US economy. For the euro, we've got industrial production numbers at the early part of the week. Focus will then shift to uh, GDP numbers out of Germany and second estimate GDP numbers out of the Eurozone. Expect the GDP numbers out of Germany to have a material impact on the euro in the week. Uh, we've, we've heard from ECB President Lagarde, who's talked about the economic slowdown bottling out at the turn of the year. So while PMI numbers provided support to work towards that argument, other stats have suggested otherwise. So weak numbers and expect more red flags for the euro. For the pound, we got manufacturing industrial production figures and fourth quarter GDP numbers due out on Tuesday. Those will influence the pound. And then we've got the autumn budget on Wednesday as well to look at. Um, pounds under pressure because of Brexit. Obviously, Johnson's unwilling to have strings attached to any trade agreement. So that suggests that WTO, WTO terms could be the fallback for Britain and the EU. Um, ultimately, we might get a last gasp agreement as we saw with Brexit. So it's not all lost just yet. So government may want to loosen the purse rings just to provide some comfort to, to voters um, following the election victory last month. Uh, in relation to the Commonwealth uh, countries, uh, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, what can we expect? What kind of numbers are we looking at uh, from these countries? For the Aussie dollar, it's relatively quiet week ahead, but that doesn't mean there's not going to be any movement. Uh, we've got business and consumer confidence figures due out on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we've seen the RBA continue to raise concerns over consumer spending. Uh, obviously, there's, there's a con major contributor to the Australian economy, and uncertainties continue to pressure the RBA on the policy front. Um, we've also seen the RBA hold back on easing policy further, purely to avoid uh, weighing on consumer confidence. Uh, we've seen a, a direct correlation between RBA rate cuts and slides in consumer confidence over the last over the last year. So, I expect the numbers have a material impact on the Aussie dollar midweek. Moving over to the Kiwi dollar, we got electronic card retail sales figures due out on Wednesday and business PMI numbers on Friday. Expect retail sales figures to have a material impact on the Kiwi, however, with the numbers coming just ahead of the RBNZ monetary policy decision on Wednesday. Expectations are for the RBNZ to stand pat. It's all about how they view the economy and policy going forward. The forward guidance will be key. So that, that could hinge on the impact of the coronavirus on the Chinese economy and the Kiwi dollar and the New Zealand economy's reliance on China. We saw trade data out of New Zealand a couple of weeks ago demonstrate the large proportion of exports going to China. So obviously that's going to have a material impact. Over to the Looney, it's a quiet week ahead. Stats are just limited to housing sector numbers on, on, Friday, on Monday. So that's just going to leave the loony in the hands of market risk sentiment towards the global economic outlook and obviously crude oil prices demand. We've got OPEC and Russia looking to cut production to support crude oil prices, which would be loony positive. The numbers and data coming out of uh, the Asian giants was pretty dire last week. Can we see an improvement for China and Japan? For the Chinese one and Japanese yen, it's quite a week ahead. For the Japanese yen in particular, there are no real major stats to, to move the dial next week. Tertiary industry activity numbers out at the end of the week will garner some attention, but obviously we've seen some pretty dire numbers out of Japan and the Bank of Japan is yet to be willing to make a move on monetary policy and even delivering a more optimistic outlook on the economy and inflation. So not much out of Japan to, to cause friction across the markets. For the, for the yuan, we've got inflation figures due out on Monday and even a slide in uh, wholesale inflation, we're not expecting too much influence on the markets. Uh, China loans at the, end of the, at the end of the week, however, will garner some interest as forecasts are for a jump in loans um, that will need to 
to be in line with forecasts or better to support risk sentiment. It's ultimately going to boil down to the coronavirus. However, uh, a continued spread and rise in the mortality rate will test the market for sure in the week ahead. And lastly, let's focus on geopolitics with the coronavirus, uh, President Trump's impeachment and uh, the UK negotiating with the EU. It's a busy week ahead in terms of geopolitics. On the geopolitical risk front, Trump's impeachment, the outcome, um, that could give him some wind in the sails. He'll be the first president to run for a second term, having been impeached. He might use some of that to use as a platform to jump. Um, you know, obviously, we've got the threat of tariffs on the EU. And there's also the, you know, the issue in the Middle East that he may revisit and look to force Iran's hand to return to the nuclear agreement and the negotiating table. Um, to resolve that issue and put that as another feather in his bow um, ahead of the next presidential election. Um, so yeah, EU tariffs in Iran would probably be my two best bets. Looking across to Britain, obviously we've got Brexit. There's plenty of chatter on you know the, the likelihood or difficulty in forming a trade agreement with the EU. Uh, Boris Johnson's really shown his colours. Uh, he's unlikely to be willing to agree to any trade agreement that involves strings attached um, which suggests that there could even be a fallback to WTO terms, which would be not too dissimilar to a hard Brexit. That's led to the pound slide back to 1.29 levels, so we could see further downside. Much will be dependent upon the economic data next week. So all in all, yeah, Brexit, EU tariffs, and obviously Iran would be the three areas to look out for. That was The Week Ahead with Bob Mason of FX Empire. Thank you so much for joining us, Bob. And we will see you all again next week. Thank you.